Here's the thing. I wrote down pa Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, and I'm going to describe that to you, but I also want to kind of go over a little bit of the standouts for me. So Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, this is the GameCube title from uh, of the Fire Emblem uh, franchise. I think we brought this the, up last last time with the... Well, we, we, I mentioned my honorable mentions, so... Um, <laughs> I would say Fire Emblem Path of Radiance would be one I would point to because when listening to this, I kind of felt like heroism is the word I would use to describe the soundtrack. It is hopeful, wondrous, and portrays a youthful optimism that goes well with the story of the FE title and makes a lot of sense. You're Ike, you're going through the mainline well, story, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, mercenary. At, you're a mercenary young man, you're, you're finding your place in this world as well as you have to save it now, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I would say a lot of the Fire Emblem albums convey this feeling very well of wonder and, and hopefulness and, and optimism. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I think a lot of them have this feeling and they carry it along very well and, and including, uh, they have a unique feeling with each title. Like for example, awakening the debut title, the debut title on 3ds, uh, you get this album filled with what I can only describe as a breath of fresh air. And mm -hmm. that conveys through the entire soundtrack, which suits this title nicely, since it ha was the last hope for the franchise. Uh, in fact, and thankfully saved it. So, yeah, without we wouldn't have gotten Three Houses at all without Awakening or any of the other 3DS games. But Awakening was the last game <laughs> they were going to do because it wasn't selling very well. So well, they were going to kind of scrap the whole franchise if this one wasn't successful. And thankfully, it was. What was what's that line? Um, Awakening. Locked so three houses could run. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so with with that, I would have to say as well, uh, Sacred Stones is the next I would mention. It gives a feeling a of one. dread. This is the game I'm most nostalgic for, I think, out of the whole How old franchise. were you when you played it? Um, Cause that, it you well, I was probably like seven when I started, but I couldn't like comprehend the game or the mechanics at all. And I don't think I beat it till I was like 13 or something. I remember playing it when we went to the Paul Bunyan Trees of Mystery. Mm. Well, the, I think every camping trip I probably played this game. Probably. Every camping trip I remember That's probably why I have game. so much nostalgia for it because we would go and make happy memories camping with the raccoons. And, and then you hear in the corner at, around the campfire. Da, 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 da. <laughs> but switching gears here, Sacred Stones gives this feeling of dread, which is so well suited for the game. And like the game efficiently, it's it, it suited to it so efficiently since the kingdom in the, in the game uh, in the story, the kingdom has a ma has a mass amount of darkness taking over the land, literally, like there's monsters roaming freely, terrorizing citizens, and a throne that was stolen and is now in control of corrupted individual. This is a theme which is a staple of the franchise, and I think I dive into it later. No, I talk under about Rainy Dawn, but Sacred Stones is one of the like darkest things I ever played as a child. Like you and me were talking about this last night, where Wait, we're like more than Twilight Princess, because oh yeah, Lexi. Remember what we talked about last night? We were talking about uh, Marcus. Yeah, but I was really paladin. tired and my legs hurt. I was really tired. My legs hurt and my head. I scraped my forehead. <laughs> anyway, um, but no, I. This was one of the most darkest games I played as a kid. This was on the Game Boy Advance, rated E ten or T. And totally. When I was thirteen, I remember reading the dialogue and going through some of the like story beats, and I'm like, "Dang, this is dark. Like, really, really dark." All I remember, like as a kid. When you'd play this the game. This is a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah. I remember when you would play, all I remembered was there was, what is it? The dancer. Because I like the dancer because I thought that was so cool how they can give you an extra turn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It gives you an extra move on the, on the um, maps. You know? I liked the 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 the, the bird people, the Legos. Oh, that's Path of Radiance. Yeah. Oh, okay. The bird people and the, the cat and And then I, people, I yeah. specifically remember about the Game Boy game besides like the open, the title well, menu. I remember the twins. Not uh, well, yeah. I remember that they were brother and sister, and I thought that was so cool. And then I remember being like so crazy, like so like that's so dramatic that they get <laughs> separated. And then there's that one map where you have to get them back, and the enemy's in the middle, and you have to fight your way to get to the brother and the sister so they can meet up again. <laughs> and I was just like, that's so cool. And then I remember the dragon girl that just completely obliterates everybody in her. Yeah, <laughs> she's like this <laughs> little girl, like little girl, and she turns into a dragon and breathes fire on people. Yeah. Um, let me go to Rainy and Dawn. Um, this is a very interesting title. This is the second GameCube game. So this is all just Rainy super and Dawn was on Wii. Sorry, excuse me. Wii. It was the first Wii and only Wii Fire Emblem title. 
I wonder uh, why. <laughs> yeah. Well, it invokes a feeling of political turmoil listening to the soundtrack. Uh, mm. uh, nation divided, sound of depra- desperation, of identity stripped from those who have lost the war. There's a lot more politics f- in this one. And a feeling of lost identity since the losing side. The losing side, which... Let's see, wait, what are my feeling? Since the losing side, which is the main focus of this game, have been aligned incorrectly and have been closely situated with the Mad King who came, uh, originated from these people. So in the sequel, you play as the losing side, the game, the, the, the bad guys, the country you were trying to fight against in the first game. So Ike and his crew went, they fought this country, they lost, uh, or Ike won, and, you know, victory for everybody, right? But the citizens, it's really interesting how this game takes another political turn and focuses on the citizenry and how they're suffering under the rule of the new, of the people that took them over. Like, mm-hmm. it's very much echoes stuff like in real life when people overtake countries. Did you just and, say echoes in the context of Fire Emblem? Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, Fire Emblem's no stranger to this. On the SNES, there was a game called Genealogy of the Holy War, which dived into a lot of that stuff and had a very a lot of very similar dark themes. Politics. Um, politics, time travel, all that kind of stuff. But something I want to say about Radiant Dawn is, is I appreciate, something I appreciate about the, this and the GameCube games in general, the Wii game, especially Radiant Dawn, is that it puts you in the shoes of those recovering from a losing war Resisting against the side you played in the prior entry, conflict is the feeling you get from listening to this. You hear the old motifs in multiple tracks, but also hear new elements introduce themselves as you go through the album. Rainy and Dawn is a great soundtrack with over 100 tracks including included from the game. It is daunting to listen to at first, but it is worth listening to regardless. And my picks of Path of Radiance are this, which is Lion King Kingus, The Black Knight, His Father's Son, Power Hungry Fool, Puzzling puzzling Truth, and Young Warriors. I would recommend all of these tracks. They're really great. Lexi, what do you know about Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, and do you have any comments on it? Um, I remember the Or any of the Fire Emblem games I mentioned. Um, I mostly remember, like, for Sacred Stones, I remember the title theme because I liked watching that because it showed, it gave you descriptions of the monsters. It gave you a description of all the classes, which was basically just the main theme of all the fireman games. Yeah. Which I didn't know at the time because I was a little, I was a little kid. Yeah. This was like my first fireman game I played. I think Eileen Chelsea had the original one on game boy that we had over here in America. That was the second one in Japan, but our first game boy advanced title, we had it, but I always had sacred stones with me and I kind of kept it. I still have it with me actually. So, Mm-hmm. Very special game. Yeah, it is special. Um, but um, like I would, I love that soundtrack, and I think it's great, and I'm very nostalgic for it. But I want to bring up Path of Radiance because it's, I think, one of the very first orchestrated ones. Yeah, well, and it's least, really strong because it was on the Wii. It's kind of like the same no, it was thing. On the GameCube. Path yeah, oh, the GameCube. It's kind of like the same thing with Pokemon when they had the GameCube ones because they took, uh, like, it was mostly original. But then they had like when you would fight. Like in battle mode, that would be like remixed versions of the chip tune yeah. Pokemon game. So that's kind of the same thing in this um, in this situation. Is like yeah. they would take songs from the Game Boy games and the SNES games, and they would uh, put them in a more like non chip tune, reorchestrated kind of MIDI um, remix. So yeah, yeah. But um, I'm trying to remember because I always remember the. Like the preparing music, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Where you're just choosing your troops, and I don't remember if it's in Sacred Stones or Path of Radiance. Or... I don't remember. Well, also it's some, it's good to mention that a lot of the things you hear in pretty much every Fire Emblem game, a lot of the themes you hear are remixed and reused in every title. Basically, like you go to Sacred Stones, you hear a lot of the very similar stuff in Path of Radiance. But Path of Radiance brings a lot of new stuff to the table, orchestrated. Yeah. Um, even in Awakening, which I haven't. Heard, I mean, I played Awakening, but like the soundtrack is very much airy. It's a really good soundtrack and it fits the game well, but I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it on its own. It's mm-hmm. also kind of, as David used in our, 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 our talk about Shutter Island or Stay, it's very hostile to the listener, I would say, just because of the titling. The titling makes no sense. It's all quotes from different conversations that are out of context that you're not aware of. Wait, is that the one with Crom Awakening? 
Yeah, Awakenings one Crom and Lucina. Yeah, isn't the this, I, the only track I've heard from that game is "Don't Speak Her Name" because I watched yeah. someone analyze the track, the song, and mm. they talked about really what the context of it was and why certain parts of the song are reflecting the characters and what happened at that scene and during that battle before that before that battle and stuff like that. So that's really all I know from what is it, Awakening? Yeah. I lost track after the Wii one. So like all I know is that there was time travel involved in uh, Fire Emblem. And uh, yeah, we have a bunch of clones. And for some reason, they're all in Smash Brothers. And that's all I know. 